Okay, this is Trophy Gold, Halls of the Blood King, part four. And I want to just check in with the characters briefly to see where everybody is at right now. We have Vanek and Triss. And Vanek currently has three gold worth of treasure, no hunt tokens, ruin five, and burdens five, and the condition drained. And Triss presently has four gold worth of treasure, three hunt tokens, uh, five, also five ruin, but burden seven. So we are in an interesting place right now because you both have a pretty high burden or a pretty high ruin right now. And you are about two thirds of the way to meeting your burdens in terms of treasure found. And so I think the big open question is going to be how much longer are you staying in this dungeon? And if you're leaving early, are you gonna be able to leave with a decent amount of treasure to where it would have been worth doing it in the first place? Um, and also you have to bring back enough treasure to kind of get back down to your starting state as well. Or, um, or not like I, I like if you yeah so I'm just I'm just kind of curious like I think there's gonna be some tough decisions to make here straight away pretty quickly if you choose to continue forth with the dungeon to try to finish it you're gonna to have to be extremely careful because you are both so close to being uh, killed so I think. With all was that there, said, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, additionally, wasn't there the idea, I think at least, of Vanek taking a bath in the blood? Yeah, that is what we're, I think that's where we're headed right now. The very last thing we saw was uh, the Princess of Blood was assisting you to the blood baths in order for Vanek to take a bath to get reduced to four ruin. And so that's something that can be taken advantage of. Um, also, I think it's worth pointing out here how much armor you all have like available to you. And it looks like you currently have none <laughs> in both cases. So um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Um, yeah, I did, <clears throat> I did think of the idea of replenishing my armor in part anyway by going to the library. It's like- And getting books. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully there's at least one or two tomes that, that Vanek would find worth picking up because right. I'm pretty sure he doesn't pick up books just for the heck of it. Yeah. Um, it's it's not that he thinks of them as armor, it's that, that, that they serve as armor. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that idea. Um, I mean, if you're, but, but you're gonna have to cross back through the, the main great hall into the library, which is fine, but right. um, you know, it, some time has passed. And so we'll kind of see how things have maybe changed if you go back. Um, that's an interesting option for sure. I think there's also the possibility of you just like finding armor in the dungeon, right? I mean, I feel like, I don't know if we've encountered anything like that yet. I think we had the armory. Been, in right? the armory, yeah, there was some armor in the armory. So you could just like go grab some of that as well. That's another option to sort of extend your stay in the halls of the Blood King. Um, but in any case, the last thing we saw was you all walking, if we look at the map, walking back across the south hall the entry hall uh, to get back over to the blood baths and um yeah that's kind of where we're at you don't have a lot of time here because the last another thing that we know is that apparently the blood king is actually going down to the great hall to greet his um his subjects and so that is a further complication if you want to go back through the great hall right um because what might be ideal is to take the stairs at this point to go up to the Blood King's apartments upstairs and to try to find the heart or whatever you're gonna to try to do up there. So yeah, that was that was pretty much my angle because um, so so if we stop by the blood baths and stop by the armory, that's about the extent of what I was thinking of doing before going straight upstairs because there's also from the off camera, we don't know about it. Uh, the two little eyes marching around. Yes, yeah. <laughs> they are going to report 
whatever they saw to someone. We don't know who yet, but yeah. And the one more thing is, I think that we should remember that uh, we had this, we tried to make this deal with the Spider Queen, mm -hmm. right? Um, to put the... So, so the vampire huntress, she's down, but she's not dead, right? That's right. The, she's she's resting yeah. in the library. Yeah. Yes, because the plan, at least that we, the deal we made somehow, is to put her in charge of bringing vampires to the Spider Queen, right? So right, that's yeah. what we should keep in mind as well. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> but that also means that actually the armory, because the armory is where the huntress was um, camping out, right? Um, I think wasn't uh, that her? No, wasn't the her, armory? No, okay. no. She she was going there to get supplies when you found her. Oh, okay, uh, but she's but she, camping she's in the yeah. upper northwest okay. corner of the. So the armory room. should be that should be available, or, or we should be able to pass. Yeah. So I think also um, because this is uh, this probably uh, will be the last session of this uh, adventure, right? So I think uh, Mervin on the. A meta level, I think, yeah, we should get up there, and I have three tokens to spend on trying to accomplish whatever it is whatever we accomplished there. Yeah. And then, <laughs> with that, um, which might be something with the heart and so on, we might then try our luck and face the Blood King in yeah. one form or another, and then we either perish or we uh, try, we, we end uh, his reign or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, or or Tris throws Vanek to the vampires and runs. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, the the uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much on par with what I'm thinking. So I think the um, I think the bloodbath scene. Uh, I don't think I'm interested in role playing that out, but I do want to. Uh, you can go ahead and reduce your ruin by one Vanek, and then I want. But I think I just want to ask some questions, like what how does vanek feel like what is it about the blood bathing in the blood that is making you feel you know um galvanized and uh and ready to take the crown here like what 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 makes you feel better about it um from i'm i'm imagining vanek being very conflicted about going into the blood because this is even though he's read that it's not dangerous, this blood came from living creatures. This is something monsters do, not him. And so at the same time that he's uh, being rejuvenated by it, he's equ equally repulsed uh, at himself. I mean, this is sort of the, an aspect of self-loathing. It's like, I, I really, this is not me. I don't want to be doing this. And the more he thinks about it, the more he hates himself and the more he hates himself, the more he's going to project that hate outward. Anything coming, it's like anything to do, anything he can do to kill this, these creatures. Um, and he's, one of the things he's thinking is if they run after him, he knows exactly where he's running to. And that's down to the spider queen. He'll make them chase him down there. Not the void fungus? Not the void fungus. The void fungus spreads uncontrollably. The spider queen, <laughs> She knows what she's doing. The Spider Queen can be reasoned with, so I think that's important, probably, right? Yeah. Um, good. Okay. So I think we could just fast forward to the armory then, because it's right next door. And let me pull up the that part of the module to remind myself what's in there. What kind of armor? How much, importantly? That is room. Okay, so we have. Oh, okay. So it is. It is one set of blood thrall armor. So it's basically like the red armor of the guards. Is that uh, what you're taking? <laughs> I think that's what Tris is taking, if that's okay with Vanek. I'm not sure Absolutely. what, so with the books, that is not um, happening right now, I guess. So maybe yet. that's what we're doing before the 
uh, before the Great Hall and so on. Mm. Uh, this armor, because of its make and its style, uh, it's worth two gold to the right buyer. So um, that's one thing you can, at the end, if you want to try to sell it. So are you putting it on? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Well, now we, so look like we belong, which is good. Or yeah. Do. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you have that cloak still, right? That uh, makes yes. people think that you're a vampire lord, right? So you actually are pretty well disguised at this point. I think as you step outside of the armory, you hear the clump, 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 clump of the patrol, a pair of guards marching your direction from the north side of the North Hall. And they sort of turn the corner and they see you and Tris, how do you respond? <clears throat> um, so I think um, mm, I think Tris says, um, the Lord of the Rats here is, well, it has just finished taking a bath, um, but we are a little bit unnerved, people in the, um, in the Great Hall are a little bit unnerved because of that pesky huntress moving around the halls. So I was, I'm, I have accompanied the Lord of the Rats um, and I will accompany them back to their quarters. The guards give you a motion of like, aye, aye, or whatever, and then they just keep going on their patrol. So where to from here? Up the stairs, I guess. Up the stairs. Up the stairs. Right, let me grab that part of the map for you. I believe that part of the map is available to be snipped. Uh, kind of, hold on. Now oh, that part of the map is unhelpfully labeled. Um, let's... So we'll just talk it out. You go up the stairs and there is a hallway that sort of um, loops, kind of like, kind of cuts south and then east, kind of turns a corner. And when you turn that corner, you are at what appears to be a balcony of some sort. There is a very, it's a large balcony that looks out to the front rose garden. And you see a few things. Well, first of all, it's a very, it's very spacious and you can smell a strong fragrance of orchids and other flowers. And there is a very large luxurious wing back chair set before a particularly large gigantic flower on the balcony and on the other side of the balcony there is what appears to be um, a telescope a large telescope set on a tripod made of silver and gold it's also in the um very particular style <laughs> that uh that they love here in the blood king's castle i shall put a picture of it on the thing So there, is that all there is of a top floor, this balcony? No, or is no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, but that's all you can see from your vantage point. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You'd have to go onto the balcony to sort of go, to keep going, basically. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, to see whether there is mm -hmm. uh, doors or anything. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Mm. I think Tris uh, will sneak forward to see as much that as that is possible now in this armor to see if there is anyone on the balcony or if there's anyone sitting in that chair trying to do that without being seen? Um, it seems empty. Um, the very first thing you encounter is the, um, is the telescope and then across the way on the other side of the balcony is where the plant okay. and the chair are. Uh, if you step onto the balcony a bit, you'll notice that there is a sort of open sort of archway that goes deeper into the second uh, second story. So it's like you go up the stairs, the hallway loops around to the balcony and then you have to go cut up to go deeper in. So it's like a landing. Exactly. It's expanded landing, okay. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's like an expanded landing, except, except there's a little bit of like, you have to walk a little bit to get to it. Yeah. I can get the layers turned off in the PDF, I'll put a picture up, but for now I'll put a picture of the- uh, Sure, sure. Vanek, no one seems to be around here. There's a balcony of some kind. Let's uh, keep moving. Yeah. I'm curious about that telescope, but it will have to wait. So if you go onto the balcony and then cut uh, back up, you'll notice that if there's more, it kind of opens up into another large sort of hall. Um, that goes down and there at the end of the hall, there are three doors. Are they all the same size and kind of, are they are this, these like three doors next to each other or are they three uh, no, like, two different? Like, yeah, three different, like one's okay. on the east, one's on the west and one's on the north. So. Okay. Um, are they labeled, ornamented, anything? Uh, let me take a look at the description. I think it's just like most of the doors you've seen fairly, okay. just the sort of metal with the kind of pulsating blood red veins on them, right? Yeah. And so what do you do? Oh, and we have a new Sekul here, by the way. Ah. Sekul is find the Blood King's heart. Um, remind me uh, um, about uh, spending three tokens. Is that something that we can do at any point? Uh, even like if, there, if a combat is just beginning, can we still spend three tokens to accomplish the set goal? And if that- <laughs> I mean, it depends, depends on the circumstances. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, because we still have to follow the fiction. So- Sure, sure, I of mean, course. Yeah, so, but, so if you, depending on when you spend them, it'll happen. It just might, you might have to deal with other things first. Of sure, course. sure, sure. Okay. All right. Um, I think uh, Tris will sneak towards the northern door. Okay. Uh, Vanek will check out the eastern door, just listening. He's not planning to open it until Tris decides what to do. And you can, uh, Vanek, are you also examining the door and listening or are you just going in? Van Vanek's looking at the east door. Oh, uh, the east door, sorry. Uh, Tris, are you also? Yeah, trying to, if there, of course, if I can hear anything behind there or, yeah. Um, both of you take hunt rolls. Sneaking up there, does evasion apply? Yeah, I'll take it because you're being, yeah, I think that's kind of fits what you're doing right now. That's a six. Go ahead and, and take, a one. Yeah, we care about the six. Go ahead and take your token. We'll talk about what you find in a minute. What did you get, uh, Fennec? Appraisal doesn't apply. I don't think Lair's quite applies yet. No, not That's quite, okay. no. Okay, no. so just be a hunt one. Okay, take your token. And now let me take a look at the stuff here. <laughs> North and the East door. The North door. I will tell you that, Tris, something about the North Door 
indicates to you that it leads into the princess's chambers. What is it about the door that's different from the other doors that makes you think that? Um, I think that mm, so if I remember correctly, the princess having taken that bloody bath, she might have she wanted to get ready for the feast or something. So there might be like a bloody handprint on the um, on the door. Um, on the handle that <clears throat> yeah I love it that's great uh, that's all I'm going to tell you for now you don't otherwise hear anything and let's talk about that other door You don't hear anything at that door either, Vanek, but you will notice or you'll hear from behind you something squishing behind you. What do you do? Uh, whip around, what's, what's there? Oh. At the Western door, underneath it, you see the eyeballs squishing out from underneath the bottom of the door. And when they see you, they stop and try to go back. <laughs> what do you do? Um, um, grab them so they can't go back where they were. That I, I don't want to grab them. He just does it. It's just <laughs> sort of a not today, not not today. Good. I've had it with all of you weird things. Um, I like you just grabbing them. What do you do with them? Um, I'm, I'm, I have one in each hand. So now my hands are busy <laughs> and I, I'm just trying to keep them from moving. It's so, Vanek's in shock. He's just grabbing them because he doesn't want them to go back wherever they were. And he, he's, he's just frozen. He just has two eyeballs in his hand that are squishing around in there and he's just frozen. Chris, you, you're aware of this as well. What are you doing? <laughs> Today I'm going to um, walk over there um, to um, to Vanek, and I think I'm going to take the like basically just walk slowly up to him and pulling out this pot of tar, and I take one of them from Vanek, and I just drop it into the pot of tar and then take the second one from him and I also drop it into the pot of tar. Okay, that, that takes a little bit of work because he's like got this, he doesn't want to crush them, but he's got a death grip on him anyway. It's just like, uh, got to pull one finger off at a time. And I think- You're on mute, Jason. I was just I saying, think give me a minute, I'm checking, it, checking something yeah. fast while you talk. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if that makes, if, if that's actually uh, very um, wise, but I think that's the way Tris does this. So I, I see the scene with, you know, Vanna kind of holding them in front of him, kind of unsure what to do, frozen, and Tris, you know, pries them from his hands, puts them into the tar, and then just throws the tar into the garden as far away as possible. Nice. So these shouldn't trouble us any longer, <sighs> Vanek. I don't think they can see anymore if they ever crawl out of there again. Those are the same ones in the those I, are the same ones in the in the in the lounging room. I think so. Whatever they have seen, I think uh, they're not seeing anymore. I think we should go wherever these came from. 
whoever they reported to, we should have a word with them. They came from behind me. They not the east the the door I checked. I heard no sound. They came from behind me. Yeah, they came. They came from underneath the uh, the third door, basically. Yeah. It seems the door in the north leads us back to the princess. She's. Uh, I think we don't need to disturb her right now. So, let's take that third door. Okay. Um, Vanek will put a hand on the doorknob and open it. It opens. And let's see what you find. Uh, it opens up into a chamber that is, it's like a hall, similar to the Great Hall, but smaller in scale. It has red veined, uh, a red veined marble floor and blood stained pillars lining it. And there are great murals painted all over the walls depicting the Blood King's conquests, romantic conquests, coronations, battles against various alien species. There are also some spike armored statues with glaives also stained with blood that are arranged around the room as well. And then in the north side, there is a door. What do you do? I think Triss will continue to sneak forward and tell Vanek, wait here at the door. I will see if I can figure out if anyone is expecting us there. Okay. Vanek will keep an eye on the way we came and the other doors in this, in this corridor while Triss goes into the room. Let me back up. Tris, you're going into the chamber with the pillars and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you're going up to the north door. Yes, slowly. You, as soon as you get about halfway there, the four statues wearing spiked full plate armor shift. Um, <clears throat> I assume you stop as soon as you I stop. Shift. Yes. Um, I stop and um, I look back to Vanek. Um, and I try to take a closer look at these. So these starters, they are wearing plate armor. Are they carrying mm -hmm. any weapons? They have glaives, like long mm -hmm. glaives. And as soon as you get about to the half, about halfway to the door, they just make like a, each of them does like a slight, like, like just mm -hmm. a, little, a little shift. Do you continue or do you go back or do you do um, something else? I think I continue. They will step off of their plinths mm. uh, animated and they will drop their glaives. But you're wearing the thrall armor. So they are, they're almost like confused, like, they don't expect you to be up here doing this, but at the same time, you're dressed like someone from who belongs. <laughs> so it's uh, it's a bit of a detente. They're not attacking you directly, but they are on guard. Mm.
you'll notice this, Vanek. What are you doing right now? Um, I'm holding the door open for Triss in case he needs to run back out. And my back is to the open door so that I can continue to see the hallway as well as where he's going. <clears throat> So that's it. I mean, it, it looks like, so they, they were on kind of plates and now they're, they're like they have stepped little, off. Little yeah, pedestals, yeah, yeah. right? Pedestals, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, so, so they are on the side of the hallway, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm, Yeah, um, <laughs> I think Triz is uh, relying on being quick footed um, and uh, will creep forward, kind of eyeing them, you know, like trying to put his uh, body, you know, like straight and kind of showing the breastplate of the armor and really trying to, you know, look like he belongs and slowly creeping forward. And and under ready to if they if they if they start to move aggressively or something that he would just dash towards the door and try to open that and get out of their way. I think this is a risk roll. The whole sequence is a risk roll. Mm -hmm. um, I don't need the dark die yet. I think because I think the penalty here is going to be you're going to have to combat them right, and that's when dark dice will come into play. Sure. What? Um, I mean, do you have any other thoughts about what could go wrong, Merwin? That I, I mean, I kind of know what's going to happen, but if you have anything better, <laughs> any other better thoughts, I'm open to them. Um, um, things that could go wrong. Um, well, hopefully the Blood King's not here, so we'll skip past that. Things that could go wrong. Somebody else has a plan similar to ours and we're gonna step on each other's toes. That's something that could go really wrong. Mm -hmm. Interesting, we'll see. It's also a good devil's bargain. Yeah, <laughs> it is, it's a great devil's bargain. Uh, let's talk about your dice. So uh, so I guess acrobatics, acrobatics evasion. And evasion yeah. would all yeah. uh, apply. Absolutely, you got one light die. Let's talk about devil's bargains. Do you wanna offer that as a devil's bargain? Merwin? Yeah. Um, devil's bargain. Uh, no matter what, no matter what, Triss is welcomed into the north door. <laughs> um, the, implica the implication being that it's not, that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say that no matter what, no matter what, you can't come back the way you came. Oh, those are tough. I think I'm going to take the second one, yours, Jason. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, looks like we're getting separated, Renick. Uh, um, but I uh, just have a quick question before he makes the risk roll, and that is, uh, can I use a ritual to assist? Uh, you can do a help roll for sure, and the ritual could just be the fictional, the fiction of it, I suppose. Okay. Um, yeah, well, do because we have you to... are risking yourself when you do a help roll, right? So... And I can do yeah. that after after I see your roll, right? Yes, yeah. 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 So yeah. that would be better. But it has to include a dark die, and he's not doing yeah. a dark die right away. So The um... text actually now, I since I copied that last time, now there's a reference sheet in the yeah. Keeper that has yeah. the help roll text. Okay, let's go for risk two then. Five. The complication is going to be the main reason why you can't come back the way you came is the guards essentially form a phalanx around the door. If you're okay with that, 
Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. And I'm going to so say basically because that was the idea kind of, right? As soon as they move to kind of block, I would dash towards the door and open it and try to get inside there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's not even just that. I don't, I don't even know okay. if it's like that they suspect you of being, that you don't okay. belong, but it's more like, if you need to be let back out, the Blood King will say so, <laughs> right? Sure. And so, um, but the problem, but by, by the way I've set it up is Vanek can't really follow, right? Sure. So, right. Yeah. I'll be back, Vanek. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your cool around here. All right. You go inside and we'll talk about what you see in a moment, but the, the guards, yeah, they just form like a, like a, like a wall by the door, standing sentry um, in case something's going on in there, in case they need to stop you from coming out or whatever, right? So I'm gonna pick up with Vanek though. Vanek, what are you doing in the meantime? Um, Vanek takes a deep breath and it, it, it shakes. Uh, it shakes in his chest. It's not stable by any means. And he'll let the door fall closed because there's no way he can follow past four guards. And whatever whatever cleverness Triss has up his sleeve, it's got to work for him. Um, he's going to open the door across the way, the east door. The east door. This is like a studio. There are canvases everywhere, um, hanging on the walls and ceiling, and also the ceiling, they're stacked atop one another. A lot of red paint, uh, many paintings of alien landscapes. There are a number of finished pieces, which are some very bizarre landscapes that are arranged around the room. And on the opposite side of this studio, there is another door. Um, continue through. If you go to the other door, it opens up into a large semicircular room that is an observatorium. The ceilings are high and arched and they're painted like the night sky. And in the middle of the room is a large planetary system model made of precious gems and gold wires. And there's a large lamp in the center that appears to uh, represent a very important central star. And next to the model, there is a pedestal with a large leather bound tome atop it. Okay. What do you do? Uh, so a model, a planetary model, and the and the leather tome are the two standout things that I see at the moment. They're the only things that you see. And then the sky above is the, the ceiling above is painted to look like a night sky. Oh, it's not even the real sky. No. <laughs> Vanek's shoulders fall when he realizes he can't even see the real sky. Uh, and he's gonna, he's gonna go look at the, um, he's gonna go look at the planetary model first and then move to the, this is not something he understands at all. It's just, he's looking for something that would be a heart and a book doesn't seem, a book seems less like a heart than something larger and more convoluted. Uh, take a hunt roll. Uh, uh, appraisal, I believe, would might apply here. Yeah, I'll take that. So that'd be a hunt two. There's a six. Nice, take your token. The most interesting thing here, I mean, it's, I mean, you have all these like planets that are kind of, you know, in orbit around this like central sort of lantern star 
this star itself is shaped it's like a kind of kind of a polyhedral shape and it's glowing red and you you're using appraisal right mm -hmm. i will tell you that if you could find a way to take this thing apart and take it out of here. It'd be worth a lot of money, probably five gold. Wow. Okay. Does the lan the lantern is glowing. Uh, it, do I, I, I was, there's no way to see whether there's anything inside it other than the the light itself. Is it too bright? Take another hunt roll, but I don't think appraisal is on the table here. Okay. Um, let's see, is there anything else? I, I don't think layers is quite here. Um, actually, I have dismantling as a skill. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Um, so you can use I'm that skill. Go ahead, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and rip this thing apart because I can, and I know both I and uh, uh, Tris could use the resources. Plus, if there is a heart in here, I will find it when I take it apart. <laughs> so you're going to start taking it apart. I love it. Uh, we'll come back to that. Okay. Um, I might give you a roll for it, but we'll come back to it in a minute. Okay. Tris, in the meantime. You step inside these chambers and this is another one of those spaces where it's much larger on the inside than it seems like it should be uh, based off what you know of the castle. It is, um, there are pillows and veils and luxuriously decorated tapestries all over. There are numerous people, about 10 people of many cultures and species and planets possibly. And they are all sort of just lounging about. They don't even really seem to notice you too much. They seem very like kind of caught up in each other and just their own whatever they're doing as they lounge about. It's almost like an opium den, you know, they're a little distracted. Beyond, beyond them, importantly beyond them, there is a large, heavy veil that appears to divide the, something, divide the room in two. So what do you do? Um, I think Tris, um stand, moves to like a corner where he's not where he might be not really um you know appear out of the ordinary or kind of way where he, he probably won't be able to hide but kind of stay out of these fields and he just want, i want to observe um observe here um i think moving back there um so I, I guess i i want to see what what are these people doing here if there is anything i can pick up what is what is this what is going on here um what these what what they are is is this a social space are they waiting for something that sort of thing so i want to keep make a hot roll yeah um, but before I do that, I want to, moving back there, maybe I, I want to spend a token to maybe find something there. Mm. Um, yeah. You will find set on the ground in the corner of the room, unattended to, what appears to be a trio of jade statues depicting some tentacled alien god 
collectively, the three statues are worth one gold. So I very kind of slowly slip them into some pocket or some part of my clothes and I observe them here. And I guess I was wondering whether carousing might be applicable here. Uh, oh, I think, yeah, definitely. Cause they're, the way they're reacting to you is important, so. Mm -hmm. A five. Take your token. The thing about this space is they are sort of not reacting to you because you look like a guard. You can tell that if you were presenting yourself as Triss, they would be more interested in you and might engage you more. So they're basically ignoring me kind of because I'm not an interesting they you think know, you're just, social yeah, yeah, just yeah. guy working there. Um, so what is, so the, the whale is, so basically there's the door behind me and then there's a whale. Um, yeah, a veil that yeah. bisects the room, yeah. Um, I think for now I'm actually happy that they are not really um, engaging with me and I kind of take on this air of being a discard and just moving towards the whale and kind of, is there, does it open, like is there an opening in it to step through it or is it? Where, do, where does it look like I can get past it? You can just open it up and go through. I will do so. <clears throat> you go for the curtains of the veil and you realize they are they're incorporeal. They have no substance to them. And you realize at that moment that other things in the room have no substance to them. Your hand just sort of passes through, say, a little, a little pillar over here or whatever. What do you do? Um, so, so what do I see? Is, is there another part of the room behind there where I see, what do I see there? Um, that's the thing. Take another hand roll. Okay. Uh, let's see. I guess there's no skill here that applies. A five. Take your token. Nothing in the room is real. Mm. The people, the, the finery, the fabrics, it's all an illusion. Okay. Um, so I think that's what, um, uh, Tris realizes after a moment, maybe the, maybe it's like, maybe it's actually kind of like this repeating sentence as a sequence, you know, of these people. Like after after a few minutes, I see that they, the revelers here, they're kind of doing the same motions again, you know, that sort of thing. Um, mm, I wonder. I'll cut back over to Merwin for yeah, a moment. Yeah, good. Vanek, you are going to try to disassemble the planetary model, yes? Yes like it. Um, while you're doing that, you hear something crawling on the ceiling, a skittering above you. What do you do? Um, I 
set aside whatever delicate machination I'm in the middle of and, and glance upward. You glance up to see a long prehensile tongue dangling down, stretching toward you, gently lapping at your cheek and lip. Sarku is above you, watching you. He retracts his tongue and says, Well, are you here to do some murder, murderer? Let's take a five minute break. Tris, you notice behind another veil You see someone standing there. It appears to be the princess. The veil is fairly sheer and you can see her, what appears to be her. What do you do? I think Tris walks up to this figure, mm, says, um, this here seems to be but a faint version of the kind of festivities that I'm used to did I not find myself in the right spot to for where I was invited to a feast? Are you, you're not trying to pretend to be the guard right now, right? You're being no. Chris, yeah. The princess says, You can go ahead and remove that disguise, Triss. Um, I... I too am more accustomed to the finer things in life. She steps beyond the veil. In my day, I was the talk of the court. I was a star. And I intend to retake my place in the world. And you and your friend are going to help me just as you have been helping me. Well, I am spoken for by another lady. Oh, by me? And the princess suddenly appears to be Simone. I was just about to call on you. I seem to have found myself in some form of illusionary festivities. Let's get out of here and find the Blood King's heart. I would like to spend three tokens also at this point. But... <laughs> spend the tokens. Vanek, Sarku, crawls down to the floor where you're at. As he's doing so, you'll notice near the base of the central lantern 
planet is a very tiny keyhole. Sarku says, I'm afraid I cannot let you finish the task Lady Holston has set you on. What task would that be? I Destroying the Blood King, of course, so that she can assume his place. Ah. Uh, so your allegiance is with the Blood King then? No, 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 no. But the Blood King is the only one who has the power to release me from my curse. The taint that I have received from Dredakun can be reversed, but only by one as powerful as he. And so I'm afraid he must live. Hmm. He doesn't seem to be particularly threatening at the moment. No, but he has his eye on that central glowing lantern as well. Uh, Which you have noticed, there's a tiny keyhole near the base. Yes. I Out of and character, that's the answer to the, the, yeah. the second. Yes. Um, unfortunately, I don't believe I have a key for this. Um, I say, I thought I had already released you from some curse, which is again, I am puzzled that you're calling me a murderer when all I have done is help you. Well, when one converts with murderers, it's difficult to tell you apart sometimes, but you have murder on your heart, do you not? in as much as I would prefer to stay alive, indeed. And are you not consorting with us on a regular basis, which would make you then equally murderous? Yes, yes. And I wish to escape that sad, desperate condition. I wish to be the man that I used to be before I owned the wrath of Dred Akun. I helped you before, I will help you again, if you help me first. Well, what do you need from Saku? I seek the, well, to begin with, What sway have you with the powers within this castle? <laughs> Sadly, Saku has very little sway, mm. but I have seen things. I know that you are being deceived by the blood princess, How and so? you specifically are being deceived by your companion. How do you know this? And how is the princess deceiving us? Because the princess is Lady Holston. And your friend is in league with Lady Holston. Uh. You are just being guided along by the both of them in their efforts to overthrow the Blood King, a puppet, a pawn. Vanek probably drops whatever he was working on and then fumbles to pick it back up. They are no doubt, even now at this moment, having a laugh at your expense. 
thought the Lady Holston was dead. What proof have you? Oh, no, no, no. There's no destroying her, I'm afraid. Simone says, we won't have much luck going back out that way. What do you propose? What other way out of here is there? My love, do you know? Well, I do not. I, well, I might be able to convince the sentries that I am the blood princess. Uh, it worked so, on the way in, but we shall see. I guess um, I might uh, get bad back into my role as your um, royal guard then. Yes. You, she goes for the door. Only to discover it's locked, it won't open. She says, hmm, it would seem someone intends to keep us here. Hmm. Let me try to open it. How will you attempt to do this? Mm. I think I'll take the Union Jack pin that I have and try to use the pin kind of, you know, <laughs> as a lock pedal with the lock. <laughs> You'll be fiddling with that for a minute. Back to Sarku and Vanek. So what's your offer to Sarku, Vanek? Um, at the moment, I, I have two very unpalatable options that I, I don't want to share right now. Um, I'm thinking of sending him down to the Spider Queen. That's one, but he probably already knows about her since he seems to have his uh, senses everywhere. Uh, the second would be to make a deal with the worst devil, but I really don't want him to be tainted by the fungus as well as Dread Akun. <laughs> Um, so my offer is that I will, uh, I will say to Sarku, yes. even if we defeat the blood, as we defeat the blood king, I am not interested in giving this castle over to the likes of Lady Holstein if, Holston if she is still alive. I will do, I will do everything in my power to release you from your curse. Help me find the key to this lantern and recover Triss. I don't know where he is. He went in the room across the way. Tris, you are fiddling with the door when someone steps through the door 
immaterial. And Simone is shocked. Your, your majesty, I, I didn't expect you to, to be up here right now. You will see that the Blood King has materialized into the room and is facing Simone. What are you doing right now? Um, So, but but he so he immaterially stepped through the door. But while I was fiddling with the door, he just the door through you, yeah, yeah. But the door was basically still. The door is a um, material door. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Opposed yeah, to yeah. all the other. Yeah, yeah. So I cannot just also. Uh, yeah, no, no. Step through it. Okay. Um, I think I'm actually going to try to stand there pretending to be this guard next to the door as if I were the royal guard that the princess came with and really try to play this role um, as good as I can. The Blood King says, Lady Holston, your treachery has been revealed to me. You thought you could disguise yourself as my daughter. <laughs> you thought you could usurp my throne. You are most mistaken. And Lady Holston throws herself at the Blood King's feet, begging for her life. It's fairly obvious the Blood King is having none of it. And he unsheaths a long, strange, curvy, twisty blade from his hip and raises it to strike her down. What do you do, if anything? Um. I think um, I think I'm going to um, when I see this um, that he's kind of picking up this this sword this blade. Um, I think in the moment that um, he attempts to strike her down, I think Tris steps behind him and tries to grab the uh, Blood King while engulfing his body in flame. All right. That is a bold move. Bold, and very bold, dangerous because very I have dangerous ruin move. five. Because <laughs> you have ruined five. Yeah, extremely dangerous. I thought, he had, the, I thought he had the uh, the the spirit cushion the from drinking. I thought he had one extra. Oh, there is. You, do, there's you have an extra. Cushion. Yep. Yeah. You have an extra. That's right. You do right now. Still. Um, yeah, it's still pretty dangerous. Um, okay, so this is where we're at. It's a risk roll. What could go wrong, Berwin? Oh man, it's more about what could go right. Can he please emulate both them, both of them? <laughs> <laughs> That's a possibility, sure. Um, I think it could be as quite as simple as doesn't work, and you have to combat the Blood King. Um, but I like both ideas. We'll see where it goes. Tell us about your dice. So the idea is basically, I mean, I don't think this will kill the Blood King or anything. I think that this will. I want to give. Um, 
Lady Holston kind of either time to get away or even to get some sort of uh, over, like get get the hand and over the the advantage over the Blood King yeah, for a moment. Yeah. Or so not so yeah. So the, yeah, that, that sounds like a good reasonable goal. Um, okay. Well, so what about your first die? Um, well, I guess um, distraction to distract the Blood King from this execution and acrobatics for being yeah, quick I like enough distraction. to get. I like distraction. Yeah. Here's um, my devil's bargain. The devil's bargain is no matter what, the Blood King has the little key on him and it's melted in the fire. Um, I have a quick question before my devil's bargain. And that is uh, earlier on, you said that everything in this space was incorporeal or not real. Yeah, well, not everything, but most of okay. it is an illusion, yeah. So, so apparently the Lady Holston is, is not an illusion and the not. blood and the blood king walking through the door we don't have a guarantee that he is corporeal yet he hasn't not done anything yet yeah um so no matter and this is going to be a really weird one no matter what the blood king is an illusion Intriguing. What do you think, Adrian? Um. I think I'm going to take neither <laughs> right now. And you have the dark dive for ML8, so go for it. Ooh, okay. You are All up right. to six ruin, but you have a buffer ruin from the spirits. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, six dark. It's only good for this adventure. It goes away after this. Um, but it's a full success. <laughs> You're getting what you want, uh, which is to either give Lady Holston a chance to escape or to overpower the Blood King temporarily long enough for you know whatever to happen. Um, which do you actually want? Both, or like, do you want Lady Holston to get away, or do you want to have the Blood King mm. at a disadvantage right now? Um. I think um, I think I want to want Lady Holston to overpower the Blood King for a moment. And I think because I think while doing this, stepping up there, I think Triss has noticed this little key. And I think that's what Triss will be going for in the yeah, moment. Yeah, I like I like that. I was I was thinking this is a chance to get the key. Give us the scene, including how your ruin goes up. Well, I guess um, I what I have to do is basically I, um, I really step up there and whatever. I mean, I'm not sure you know what kind of corporality the Blood King has, but it's definitely powerful. So. Um, in order for this to work, I think Tris actually has to kind of really grab that figure from behind and then start the fire. And so in this split second where he just grabs it, I think all his arms get burned up or or at least, you know, whatever it is that the... Like, like hot kings, metal fuses to yeah, your skin or something. something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, but I do that and scream and i think that gives lady holston 
a moment to because she was so scared of the blood king in his full control right but now that he really is kind of also maybe Triss and the blood king both are kind of screaming or, or at least um reacting to this and so she might now um try at least for a moment to get the upper hand Yeah, and I think basically you'll see the key. You can grab the key if you wish. Um, and I think essentially what she does is she just sort of, um, I think she just kind of like grabs him and hurls him across the other side of, or hurls him to the door and kind of like smashes through the guards so that you all can get the hell out of there. And I think you'll pretty quickly run into Triss and, or Avanik and Sarku <laughs> um, because they're just right there. Uh, Avanik and Sarku, you'll hear the, or Avanik, you'll hear the chaos going on in the Great Hall. What do you do? Um, <clears throat> he's, Avanik's gonna scramble to get the rest, rest of this thing uh, put away so he can carry it out, the observatorium. I mean, um, I think, you were interrupted by Sarku, and I think we have this chaotic situation. If you want to just grab the central star, I think that might be the best you okay. can manage right now. Yep, let's do that. Okay. Um, you have the central we, star. That's the, the central star. Um, and uh, uh, take a peek out because this observatorium is actually, if I remember, right it's uh there's a studio between me and the outer door correct yes um so i'm gonna uh grab the the, the glowing central star and um go to that doorway so i can look through the next doorway and see what's going on in the hall yeah and i think you'll just see <laughs> you'll see simone and you'll see Simone and Triss bursting from the Great Hall into the sort of central hall. Okay. So this is the, uh, and help me out here for just a second. I can't remember if we put two and two together. I don't think we ever put two, to two, two and two together to say that Simone was Lady Holston. No, but in her sort of twisted way, the Blood Princess, AKA Simone, AKA Lady Holston was trying to like let you in on it when she was kind of like suggesting um, that, cause she kind of made some suggestions about, about like Lady Holston and, and, and Triss maybe like not being totally honest. Right. It's very weird that Simone would be here right now. Correct, that's the strange part. And yes. right now, Sarku is the most trustworthy person that I know. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> right. um, so this is just everything is topsy turvy in Vanek's head right now. So Tris, what do you do when you see Vanek and Sarku come out of the of the studio? Vanek, quick! We we have to get away from here. The Blood King. It's we were only able. To barely escape. Simone, go down. upon seeing Sarku, flies at him, and Sarku flies back at her, and they are now fighting in the middle of the hall, tearing at each other. Um, <laughs> what do the two of you do? Um, do we see going... the... Sorry, good. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, Adrian. Just about to ask, do we see the Blood King anywhere or did he disappear after being the blood king through? is probably still like getting his bearings but you don't have a lot okay. of time here okay. uh i i yell out i need a i found i found something but i don't know what's i, I think we i found what we were looking for but i need a key i, I can't get into this last i time. have the key let's go down it's like just like a bad movie let's okay. let's let's these two will keep fighting this so you just leave the two fight. of them up there as they're tearing each other apart. <laughs> okay. These creatures are made from a different stuff than we are, Vanek. Let's okay. get down. All right. Vanek will dodge the combat above him and to the side. Hopefully it's in the middle of the room. I can get around them um, and get out to where Triss is. 
and I, in the back of his head, he's going, we'll have words later. <laughs> Let's get to the huntress. She will know what to do. Okay. Um, on the way down, I say, grab the, grab the telescope. We need everything we can get out of here before we go. <laughs> you can definitely grab the telescope. <laughs> okay. Uh, the telescope's worth three gold, so, yeah. You are rushing down the stairs to get to the, the central great hall, not that little mini one, and then to the library where the huntress is. Is that the idea? Yes. As you get down to the main hall, you see that fish vampiress, uh, I don't remember her name, but she's like running towards you and she says, run, oh Lord of rats, run. And a bolt just flies right through her chest and she drops dead. <laughs> and the vampire huntress, Celiana is there and she's like, have you found it? Have you found the way to destroy the creature? I think so. Yes, but the princess is just as bad as the Blood King. Worse, probably. <sighs> of course. We have to lead her down to the, we have to find a way to lead her down to the spider, the spider queen. First things first, Vanek. We, we need to first destroy it the Blood King himself before he is able to follow us down here. Siliana, how do we do this? I have the key. Vanek has the, oh, my arms. I, I grabbed the, I, I don't even know how I did that, but I was able to get the key from the Blood King himself. Does Celiana know that you have to find the heart and destroy the heart? Does she? No, I think we're about to tell her. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she will just say, you know. I mean, I mean, basically, she's just gonna assume that you have to open up this thing, and yeah, the heart is in there, right? So, well, that's what we're thinking, but yeah. we'll find out in a second. <laughs> yeah. Do you uh, open I'll, it up? Oh uh, yeah, I'll take the. I'll. I'll say. I'll say, let's get back, let's get somewhere safer. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take the key from uh, uh, Van, uh, uh, Triss and ask Celiana to help Triss come with us. He's not doing very well. Yeah. And we'll find... Um... Didn't we rest in this room to the side last time? The, the, the that's lounge. where the eyes were, right? The yeah, lounge. the lounge. Yeah. yeah, let's get back to the lounge, I think. Okay. You get to the lounge. Um, it's quite chaotic as you're kind of making your way to the lounge. There are guards kind of rushing back and forth everywhere. There are guests rushing back and forth everywhere. Uh, Celiana takes a shot at the guests every chance she gets <laughs> um, as you're kind of like going back to the lounge. And you get into the lounge and you can kind of slam the door shut, grab a breather, then what? Let's open up the, let's open up this heart. Take the or key, open up this Vanek. Lantern. Yeah. I, I, I get the key from Triss and we'll open this up and see what's inside. When you put the key in and turn, the sort of strange polyhedral lantern shape sort of flies away, leaving what appears to be a heart, like a anatomical heart glowing bright red and still beating. The huntress says, destroy it, run it through. She's she's loading up a crossbow bolt. Um I think, yeah. Should I take my silver dagger? I mean that worked on the British vampire. Um I, okay. Okay. I think that's so I think that's Triss pulls the silver dagger and then attempts to stab the heart. You plunge the silver dagger into the heart, and as soon as you do, the whole fucking castle rumbles and shakes. It's shaking 
it's coming apart. Seliana says, ah, so it seems we may meet our end in this place after all, but at least we destroyed the Blood King and so our deaths will have been worth it. And she puts, she puts her arms around you and says, brothers, we are dying for a glorious, worthy cause. We're not dying. Great. Not yet. Pick up Triss's other side. I'll get. I'll get his. I'll get his right. Get his. Get on his left and help me carry him out. So you are going out of the lounge, and it's the place is collapsing. You see. You see Lady Holston crawling, or Simone crawling down the stairs, and she's crying out, "Get me to the throne." Get me to the throne and I shall restore this place. Hurry before it's too late. But Sarku grabs her and pulls her back into the stairway. What do you do? Um, she's going, oh, so we've crossed, a, we've gone around back that way. Yeah, you're kind of, okay. you, you're kind of at this, you can, where you can see the stairway. Got yeah. it. Um, How do we get is so this place is falling apart is it yes. just is it sort of is is it remaining physical or does part do parts no, of it seem like it's, it's going masonry away? is collapsing and crashing to the ground right now okay all right um great big gouts of blood in the walls are spraying everywhere like ruptured pipes all right um i say take him out Take, take him out, take out, take, get Triss out. And I will lag behind. I don't want either one of these creatures <laughs> making it to any place that's gonna give them to give them more power. And Bannock's super concerned about the fungus thing down on the floor and the basement too. So, um, oh crap, the throne. Vanek's gonna run back to the throne. You're running to the throne. I'm running to the throne, full speed. <laughs> you can get there, no problem. Okay. Uh, then what? I'm gonna put the crown on my head and sit on the throne. <laughs> I love it. I think um, I think at this point, um, Tris is going to shake off Celiana. And so what do I see on the stairs? Do I see Saku and Lady Holston fighting? Yes. On the stairs? <laughs> yeah, they're on the stairs. Um, I think Tris says, um, I don't think you'll be able to, to get there in time, my love. We have to get out here. And I think Tris will um, let's see. Um, I think Tris will throw the dagger at Saku so that Lady Holston can get free of Saku. We shall come back to that. Vanek, you are putting on the blood crown and sitting on the throne, yes? Indeed. I want to think a minute about where this is going to go, but I love it. It's a great idea. Let's take five. Okay. The
the first two years after you put on the crown and sat on the throne were somewhat aimless. The remains of the Blood King's castle floated through space. You learned how to control it. You learned how to move it through space. And you were even able to manage to reach other worlds. And those of you that were left in the castle came to a sort of peace with each other. Sarku and Lady Holston stopped their fighting after a while. Some of the denizens, the vampiric denizens that were there, even got on board with things, the ones that didn't just keep to themselves. You keep a regular watch on the void fungus and the spider queen to make sure they don't get out of control. You even have had the opportunity to engage in some diplomatic efforts with the spider queen and the fungus from time to time. You have a little peace going on as you navigate the remains of the castle, this vessel through space, Fennec. In the third year, you found the drift. The drift is a floating rock city with a bubble of oxygen that is a home, a base, a station for spacefarers like you, adventurers who were no longer content to plumb the depths of their worlds and instead looked upwards. And they fly to the drift and their magic powered ships and they trade and they share rumors with one another, form alliances, have wars, all the sorts of things you might expect. You occasionally set the halls down on the drift whenever you find it because it moves. And there you're able to leave the halls and conduct the business that you need to conduct before you have to get back so that the residents of your craft don't tear each other apart or the fungus doesn't get free or the spider queen doesn't try to expand her realm or impregnate people or whatever she's up to. Simone has managed to start her business back up in the drift and she covets the crown ferociously, but you've also managed to hold her off all this time. And for the time being, this is your life. You may someday return to the planet you came from, but for now you're in the drift. And as we do Hearthfire, we'll learn about the drift. And then we'll see where, what happens to your characters in the future from this point on. And so you don't need to spend any gold to get back to your starting uh, ruin. Uh, you can go back to your starting ruin, no problem. You'll have had time to do that. You can spend your gold on any other Hearthfire activity you wish. Um, and if you want to use your home, I just want to know what that means to you now in this new context. 
And so with all that said, let's do Hearthfire. Who would like to go first? <laughs> oh. Sorry, Adrian. Oh my goodness. I guess uh, Tris probably has spent uh, most of this time uh, in the princess's quarters um, on the upper floor. Um, there is still this illusionary party maybe going on. And uh, I don't think he has minded so much that um, Vanek has taken on basically all the logistical and administrative duties while he keeps, you know, making music, maybe uh, dancing, spending time with Simone. Yeah, Vanek. Keeping Saku at bay. But I think we have actually, so I guess, I mean, if it's really floating to space, I think at some point, at least if there's anything that remained of the blood king, we've just thrown it overboard. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much probably the threat for anybody that doesn't toe the line is you go overboard or you get fed to the spider queen. <clears throat> Oh, you moly. Um, yeah, the, those were the two things that were the most on Vanek's mind when he, when he impulsively decided to do this. It was, <clears throat> it was that fungus can't get out no matter what. And, and Lady Holston can't get on the throne no matter what because we're going to be right back where we were. And your goal of protecting your world from the Blood King's uh, predations is also accomplished, right? So. Yeah. Except that I can't go back now. <laughs> well, maybe someday, but not in the short yeah. term. Yeah, Vanek is just more and more morose as the days, the years go by. He, I mean, he doesn't have his, he doesn't have his wife to fall back on. The person that. The one person that would bring him joy is no longer with him. Um, and, and he wouldn't wish this life on her by any means. So he, he takes some comfort in the fact that she's still alive, hopefully, but it's, it's, he's miserable, literally miserable. And anyone who has to deal with him, his, his, if he has any power of judgment, it is swift and brutal. Um, it's like stay out of his way and you'll be fine. Uh, yeah, I like to imagine you occasionally have like, you know, like little uprisings on, you know, on the vessel, on the castle, you know, some vampire or another or someone, you know, it gets in league with the spider queen and tries to do something, but then that gets put down or whatever, you know, and it's, I think it's a constantly, constantly shifting factional thing in the castle, but Ultimately, everybody's just sort of stuck. <laughs> so, yeah, and it's that <clears throat> it's that self-loathing projected outwards again. It's he feels he's becoming the monster he hated, and he's going to he's going to make sure everyone else feels it. Just stay out of his way. So then, in these three years, or really two and some change, uh, have Vanek and I mean, Vanek and Trist, do you even see each other much? Like, are you just sort of like distant from each other? I think so. I think um, be because I, I guess the point is that again, like last time, Tris is not really, he's between these two states where on the one hand, he's spending this time with Simone, this woman and on the other hand he's in thrall with this demon lady holston that has and i think she has worked to keep the two of them apart so she can continue to scheme so i think really tris has mostly spent his time up there um in in the in these quarters um you know and kind of lady holston messing with his mind and vanek really having to do all of this work um of keeping the castle kind of together. 
Yeah, I love it. And um, I, see, of course I, see, I see I see Sarku as becoming sort of the left hand of of uh, Fanic in terms of the spy network. It always seems to be informed. And the one person, like I said, that has never seemed to lie to Vanek, no matter what. Sark, who's like your, he's like your Lord Varus or whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. Little finger. <laughs> I love it. So I don't need burdens. You don't have to worry about meeting burdens and you can take your ruin back down to the starting value. And of course, unmark your armor as usual. Uh, the rest of your gold, you can put in hoard or you can spend on any other thing in hearth hearthfire that you wish i do have a thought about your shopkeeper thing uh adrian i i think i have a way of bringing that into play next time i have a thought about it that maybe the missing person is on the drift right um but we'll, we'll see and that could even be your connection back to the main world but um in any case i think for next time at least for one more cycle maybe more depending on we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have some spell jammer, spacey adventures. So I think that'll be fun. <laughs> some OSR space jammer. Oh yeah, 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 yeah that's good. Um, is the drift, um, I mean, when we land there, is that a place in a sense? So could there be a tavern in space? Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. There's like, okay, yeah, there's, yeah, there's there's pubs, there's shops, there's, okay, it's like, it's a, it's a little, little city for people who are like going off exploring the, the wilds, the wild space, so as they call it. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just like a town, but it's on this rock and above you is the black inky void of space and it's always moving. So you kind of just have to run into it, basically. Some people have probably perfected like tracking its movements, but you haven't done that yet. <laughs> you just get lucky sometimes, so. So I think the first hard fry that I'm going to do <clears throat> is, um... I, um, there might be a vampire lord um, that is, uh, so Vanek is, um, Tris is going to, to f officially learn music as a skill, I think, in, during this time. Um, and I wonder what instrument, um, Let's see. Um, I think it's actually something small that he might be able to keep with him all the time. So it might be like a flute. And so I think at a certain point during when, one of the few times that he was down there in the Great Hall, he might have seen one of the vampire lords, actually, like maybe a lord from some form of like a, you know, like some form of a duke or whatever that actually used to be. Um, a noble, even before he, they became a vampire lord, um, playing a flute, and talking to um, them. They, uh, what lord could that be? Um, uh, let's call him Lord Marcus. Okay. And I think they, um, they kind of started to talk with Tris and started teaching Tris. Um, playing the flute and so I think one of the few times that Tris came down afterwards was always for like once every week for this lesson maybe they would sit out in the gardens uh, on a bench or something and uh, play the flute um, mm, but yeah, why is he a burden Exactly. Why is you that? You have to like burden? feed him blood or something. <laughs> um, I think that actually, um, I think, um, no, I think this is, um, I think Tris, um, plays for Lady Holston now regularly and kind of has to to keep because I think Lady Holston also has this um, th there's this balance uh, 
and I think playing for Lady Holston, playing music keeps kind of her human part kind of present so she doesn't completely turn into this monstrous demon and devours Triss. So I think that's what he has to always come back and play for her. Nice. I love it. That's a good way of explaining the burden. I like it. Um, fantastic. Vanek, would you like to do a hearthfire? So <clears throat> I'm thinking, I'm thinking uh, two things. Uh, I'm, I don't want to spend too much gold, but uh, mostly because I don't know when we're going to pop out and need gold all of a sudden. But uh, I'm thinking I would like to do the carousing thing to get useful information before beginning an incursion because he really, really uh, does not, he wants to find a way to get rid of that fungus, not mm -hmm. just contain it, but to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that uh, a lot. So that's the first thing he's going to uh, spend, spend it for now and I'll ho hold it for next time. I'll, I'll have something ready. So, okay. Um, do that uh, to, and we'll call that the. Uh... Oh man, you know what? I don't think I need that ornamental heart from the statue at Holston Hall. The less I'm attached to these creatures, the better in the long, long run. So I will get rid of that heart uh, as my one gold, and then. Uh, do we actually need to go through the the checkmark process for carousing? Uh, let's read it. So it's. Um, oh yeah, carousing. yeah, yeah. You have to. Um, <laughs> you have to. Uh, so Adrian writes down an adjective, and I write down a noun, and then we reveal it at the same time in chat, and that's the name of the bar on the drift that you frequent okay and i'm thinking something spacey but let's see um, let's see um so i do the adjective right you do the adjective yeah Okay, I'm ready. Me too. All right, three, two, one. The Pious Sun. So the Pious Sun is the bar, is the pub that you frequent. And so you can just note that wherever you need to. There it is. Put it there. Down in notes, already done. Well, there's a, there's a spot there where it says your favorite tavern. You can just type it there. Oh, too. oh, I see it now. And, uh, and that's it for now. So let's okay. shift to the first thing. And uh, we'll just, I'll make a note for myself that next time I will, I will give you the info you need to uh, a way of destroying the void fungus. It may not be easy, but it will be a way. And weird thing of course is when, when we actually get to go home, I'll never be able to find my favorite bar again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, let's go to uh, back to Triss. Anything else you want to do, Triss? I think I'm going to uh, go to a different shopkeeper because the other one, uh, not only the partner is missing, but at least for now, uh, it's on a different planet. <laughs> yeah, on a different planet. So um, you don't need to name this one. You can just you can okay. just do the action. Uh, and All right. Don't worry about so the other part. I'm going to buy some uh, stuff Slots. for my backpack. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Uh, Vanek, what else would you like to do? Okay. So I think I'm going to get training in a skill, but it's not training per se. Um, it's more because of how of how I'm forced to act as the ruler of this place. It's skills that I pick up over time, or just my my uh, self loathing. Going and the out. burden is just the burden is just like you got to maintain this place, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, and or or it's more of 
this is the only way I have to vent and to pay for it. it when I get back to real life, the only I have to pay to sort of uh, uh, correct the problems that I create afterwards. Um, but but yeah, skill? that's what I'm thinking. Um, and I'm looking at the character options, um, background skills and occupation skills. Uh, is there any difference at all between these? There's not, but if you just do the drop down on the where it says training, that's it lists all of them. Oh, excellent. Um, training. Let's see. So yeah, I was I was a little confused also because there's like Determination is one and perseverance is another. So they're like so close. Yeah, they're, yeah. Um, so I'm thinking of something like intimidation. Okay. I don't have any social skills, um, but is there anything else related to rulership? I'm, I'm going through it now, I'm not sure. Um, let's see. Slaughter seems a little extreme. <laughs> it's a little extreme. <laughs> <laughs> Ruthlessness. A oh, ruthlessness is pretty good. Is that on there? Yeah, that's, that's pretty a good. good. One. I'll yeah, take yeah. that one. Yeah, that works. Based off what you've told us so far, it works for sure. Yep, I'll take it. And my burdens goes up by one. It does indeed. Okay, back to Tris. Is there a box I need to check or anything? Each time I do this, name your mentor. There a short montage. You've already, I think you've covered it by okay. explaining it the way you explained it. So. Okay. All right. Cool. And why it increases your burden. Yeah. Um, that's that. Um, I think Tris might learn another ritual. Burdens are going to be so high, Tris. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, this is not D and D when it comes to oh, yeah. you just get better and better. <laughs> you get burdened and burdened. Um, yeah. Mm. Who knows? You might find a ritual out in an adventure that's free, so, but you don't have control over that. <laughs> Looking at the options. Um... I think um, I'm going to take sleep. OK. And the reason is that or the background is um, basically I think that Tris is like, I think because of the way all of this relationship with Lady Holston and this, I think that Tris has insomnia. So I think basically he does come down, but only in the middle of the night, like at 2, 3 a.m. when everybody else is actually asleep and even Vanek, I think when he comes down and he goes to the library to look for something for the insomnia, sometimes maybe Vanek is kind of slumped over in the throne, you know, exhausted from all the work running this place. Sometimes he's not there and the throne is empty. Um, but I think whenever, even when he's there, maybe even we might even see Tris like kind of put a blanket on Vanek or something, you know, but... <laughs> You know, like he's looking at him and he's just completely um, exhausted. Um, and then going over into the library and um, looking for something to combat the insomnia. And I think that's where he comes over this ritual and he actually really first uses it on himself. 
Um, but uh, so we see this kind of him trying to combat this insomnia and um, working with this ritual and um, how does it affect his physical uh, appearance? Um, I think mm, Let's see. Um, do you have an idea? Uh, you always have bed head or you have heavy lidded eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought something with the eyes, but I think I already went for the eyes last time uh, with, with the other one with the with kind of like a fire, I think, in one of the eyes, um, if I remember correctly. So um, I think the change is not so much in the physical appearance. It's just that it takes Tris a long time to actually wake up when he wakes up, which is kind of dangerous if you're out uh, yeah. somewhere. Very good. That's a good little, I like the little scene of <laughs> Tris <laughs> tending to Vanek while Vanek is exhausted. But also, but because it's funny because you've said that like you otherwise don't have anything to do with each other really during all this time, so. Um, it's kind of fun. It's interesting. Uh, yeah. Okay. So back to back to Vanek. Um, I have two hunt tokens remaining, and you can't have hunt tokens remaining when you're done. You could just you could just put them in hoard since I didn't really give you guys a chance to spend them. So. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, uh, what about the book that was in the same room with the planet? Is there anything useful in there? Yeah, as... um, yeah, we can talk about that. The book is, I'm looking it up right now. It's as big as a backpack, <laughs> um, handwritten in a variety of tongues, sketches of various people and places. Ah, it's composed, it's reports from various beings from different worlds. There are instructions on how to talk to them with each of their worlds represented in the planetary model. And essentially what it is, it's like the Blood King's like guide for interacting with alien species, basically, and like, and a sort of rough guide to navigating the space. And so that's actually, I imagine, I like to imagine the book is how you're managing to get anything done at all, like as you sort of try to you know, because I think for the first few months you had like almost no control over this thing as it was hurtling through space. And you eventually figured out how to do that. Then you eventually started to land on worlds and make contact with people and stuff, so. Okay. Yeah, and I'm imagining because I don't have his skill or knowledge, um, this place isn't getting rebuilt to any particular. No, I think I think it just looks like it's a half crumpled mess all the time. Because <laughs> right. the other vampires, they're not going to lift a finger to fix the place. Let's face it. Right. Neither is Lady Holson or Sarku. So, right, and and they were all feeding the Blood King so he could maintain this place. That's pretty much how it was working. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think th this this place was an extension of the Blood King to some degree, and you sitting on the throne, especially initially, was was the equivalent of just like putting your thumb in the dike, right? Like there was, you know, like right. there was no, you know, um, you, at this point you've managed to uh, put up a, you know, you've managed to remove your thumb and hammer a piece of plywood <laughs> on the hole, right? It's right. kind of like where you're at right now. Yeah, it's that, it's that, it's that putting boards up on the walls to keep the zombies out kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and my, my priority is putting boards on the fungus wall and the spider queen wall. Right, and Everybody exactly. else knows if either of those things get free, they're all toast. Yeah, you're basically just keeping those two things in check <laughs> and occasionally flying the, ships, the, the, the ship castle somewhere. Yeah. And uh, I even like to imagine that sometimes the castle just does whatever it wants, you know, <laughs> it just goes somewhere. You're like, ah, so yeah. So I actually, I mean, because I've known Vanek for so long, I could see keeping my distance from him for a year, maybe. I, I mean, several months. I mean, 
I could see, you know, keeping him at arm's length. I just don't trust him anymore. But he's the only other human here. I mean, a vampire hunter is just a rabid machine. You know, she's like the Terminator. That's uh, right. Yeah, so she's there too. Like a Terminator. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I never knew her before now. And she only really has one. She's got a one-track mind. I would... I would be resentful of Vanek in the beginning. And I think after a while, maybe a year and a half or so, year, year and a half or so, after throwing myself into the work, I would realize the only way to keep part of my own humanity is to, is to re is to try to connect with him somehow. And so I would demand, and that's the way I'm imagining it. I would require his presence, <laughs> for, a certain presence. Amount, <laughs> for a certain amount of time each day yeah. and I'd ask him for his reports and I'd confirm his reports with Sarku. So to make sure he's not lying to me, to make sure I can get some semblance of trust, which is no trust at all if I have to keep confirming his reports. But that's kind of the approach that I'm taking. Trust but verify. Yeah. Um, well, so anything else you want to do on Hearthfire? I don't, uh, I don't know if that even falls under Hearthfire. <laughs> no, but you can just, um, I mean, you just put the rest of your gold and any, as much gold as you have left in Horde, or you can just keep the treasure as treasure. So. Yeah, probably better to keep it as treasure right now. Got plenty, so, plenty of space to store it. So yeah. <laughs> um, until you get back to your home world, you don't even have access to your Horde either. <laughs> so <laughs> um, anything else you want to do, Adrian? All right, then. Then we shall go to huh, stars and wishes. Um, stars can be for the whole camp, the whole adventure uh, at this point. And wishes are going to be very interesting here because I have some ideas for where this is going to go next time we meet, whenever that is. But um, but uh, but what's nice about where we're leaving off is we have lots of room to like invite new players if we want to, you know. Right. Um, uh, so, so if Blaine can't make it, we have a lot of room to like get some new people in here as well. So getting Nima back would be wild though, if Blaine can yes. make it. <laughs> so I'm dying to know how that happens, but yeah. Um, so anyway, let's do Stars and Wishes. Whoever wants to go first, take it away. Uh, I think... I need to do two, I have two stars. Uh, one is for the uh, really good RP uh, from Tris for just uh, committing to that impulsive nature that he's got. Um, I mean, and, and, forcing, and forcing a party split, which, which is so, anathema in most games. I think that's definitely worth a star. Uh, and the second star is for the general pacing. Um, I have been in many, many, many games over the years and the pacing on these adventures is really quite good. Um, so those are my two stars for right now. A uh, star for me, I... Um... Well, star for both of you, just like really, what I thought was so interesting is you both were like on the knife's edge of being dead, but you were still like doing the dangerous thing, especially at the end, which I thought was really interesting. I thought it was very dangerous for Vanek to just grab the blood king and uh Tris, and, Tris did that. or Tris did sorry for Tris to just like grab the blood king and do immolate and and all like that was a lot right and um I'd even and even just like proceeding past the statues into that room right like that was just a really really like pushing your luck kind of move um and and I think it was big and bold to like put the crown on and sit on the throne. Uh, that's my other star. I, I, I love the payoff of that. Like you've had that crown forever and like it was fun to like sort of have it pay off in a 
I mean, I, I don't know how your characters feel about it, but as player and as a GM, I really appreciated the sort of drama of what happened because of that. So yeah, uh, so that's those are stars for me. And also, um, even though we've just so far gotten some glimpses of what's going on in the in the in the castle right now. I, I can already, I already was quite enjoying some of the little details you both started like adding in about like how you run this place and how you live in this place, right? So I think that'll be fun to explore. That's kind of my wish for next time. I want to actually see it in play, so. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I, I really liked all of that. Um, for me, I it, it, in a sense, I think at a certain point, um, I decided, I mean, Tris has this weird relationship with Lady Holston, but I think he just wouldn't leave her there. I think that's what I was going for at the end as well, before the break, um, because I think I, I was, because Tris is also, he's a kind of person that loves, he that is, yeah, does things without thinking sometimes, is, uh, but loves life, so is not necessarily suicidal or something, but still, but would have gone, would, would have put his life in, in danger again. Uh, I think I was thinking about going directly for a ritual uh, to bind Sarku, but then I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to do like a two-step thing. So if, if, I, if, if I would have, because I, I think he would have committed to leaving the place with Lady Holston and leave Vanek um, deal to deal with, with whatever um, taking on that place on the throne would have meant um um yeah e even if e even kind of risking that Tris would have died here i think that that kind of fit um so i think i like the whole thing also um uh star for um uh, saku get, being back in there and just, this kind of continued very weird relationship between saku and vanek i uh, i like that um I think that that has its own quality from the beginning and it still keeps going. I, I, I really like that. Um, uh, I, I liked A Star mostly, I think, for the whole ending because it really had a cinematic quality to me with the Huntress and, every, uh, and with us kind of hurling down with the lantern or whatever. And, you know, so all of that felt like a, Basically, it was. It seemed kind of clear what was about to happen, and kind of the scene. So we were kind of just. We were only kind of watching this movie play out. Uh, that's the feeling I got. That I, um, and it was very lively. I, I like that. Um, another star for the um, the adventure as such. I think it's a, it's actually a great thing. I, I was listening to the Castle Amber uh, episode today, Fear of a Black Dragon episode, and the interesting thing is that this this here is also a haunted house. Uh, dungeon right kind of uh, it's got some of those qualities pieces. for sure yeah, yeah set yeah. pieces and then you can't leave and so I, when I was listening to this today I thought yeah that's somehow that's it sounds like where we are yeah the stuff is it's actually not as static as I would define per my definition or Tom and yeah, I's definition of Haunted House Dungeon but it's got it has a lot of those qualities but it's definitely uh, it's the, the it, it's sometimes the rooms are different depending on when you enter them. Like they do have, they do affect each other. Right. So yeah, that's true. No, yeah, that's that's right. That that doesn't apply here, but kind of this, yeah. We all these Big set pieces, definitely. The set yeah. pieces yeah. and yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I really like that. Um, yeah, um, maybe a wish already because you kind of hinted at that. So I've never done any spell jammer at all. So actually thinking about like if you would if if you would find a like a real spell jammer adventure from like the classical AD and D spell jammers oh, yeah. and then we do that. I, I think that would be a fun idea because this I think is I'm not, going definitely to, not yeah, what I thought I this, that this would turn into. So yeah, no, because I've been wanting to do spell jammer for the show and this podcast this game series is to support my podcast and in, in part so yeah i this is a great opportunity to do a spell jammer adventure um i'll tweak it as needed for the campaign obviously but um but yeah i did i played loads of spell jammer when i was a kid it was like my favorite like 2e setting so yeah i'm i'm in my wheelhouse here so yeah i'm definitely i'm i'm into that that's great um, I want to talk just for a second about your comment, uh, Jason, on 
how bad off we were at the beginning of the adventure in terms of ruin and the risks we were taking. Um, and I, I think the reason that I sort of started pushing, because when you, I'm, I'm pretty conservative. And so in the beginning of an adventure, it's like, I don't really want to get more ruined because then I can't do emergency stuff when I need to. Um, and when we were both at five and we were struggling for, you know, just one more chance, one more bit of cushion to do anything, and we picked it up, it's like, okay, at this point, we have nothing to lose. If we don't take the risks, we, we're going to die anyway, uh, is, is yeah. kind of the feeling that I had. And so that tension is, uh, was very lovely. Um, and, and it pushed, uh, it pushed me as a player anyway, to go, I, I have to do something. I have, I have to try. And the last thing that happened during the last session was that I lost all my tokens. I had three tokens and I lost them all. So that was the other thing here is you have to get tokens to give yourself some cushion anyway. So we had to try, we had to do something. Um, yeah, I thought the tension was really good throughout the whole series. Um, especially once you got into the castle, it was, it, there were just these, th there was this constant like, yeah, this constant tension of like, you know, how much more do we press forward? Like what, you know, should I, should I be spending a token right now to get a treasure because I might lose the tokens? And then we had that moment where we lost all the tokens and that was a big moment. And yeah, and today was super interesting because yeah, it was like once you took the bloodbath and once Triss got the armor, it's like you all were like emboldened and you just like were <laughs> like, okay, well now we're doing it. We're going upstairs, let's go, you know? And I thought that was great. And the interesting thing is, is I knew so long as the Blood King is downstairs, the upstairs is really safe. So you like, you didn't know that, but like I knew it. And so I was like, well, if they just go upstairs, they'll be okay. But, um, and, they'll, and they'll find out the Seckle too, which is extra important, right? Like, so once they know the Seckle, I was like, they'll, they have it locked down, but they don't know that. So let's just let them stew for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, let's see how it goes, but yeah. Yeah, no, that was great. And um, I think the, um, for, for the interesting thing for me was that because, um, but I think getting into a fight, like the funny thing about the, the armor was of course that that would only be relevant in a fight and not with rituals, right? So I was kind of, yeah, but it makes more sense actually to go for ritual here. So um, even though well, that's that another is, interesting yeah. aspect of the game, I'm always surprised. It's not just your group. It's every group I play Trophy Gold with. Groups all, for some reason, groups will always try to do a risk roll instead of a combat, but sometimes the combat is the better choice because in a risk roll, your armor is no good, right? Like, but in a combat, if you've got some armor, the combat's the preferable option, right? So it's interesting. Um, yeah, like you have a lot more control in a combat over whether you take ruin or not. And in a risk roll, you're totally at the mercy of a dark die, right? So I find that fascinating that people seem to think that the risk roll is safer, but it's... I don't, I don't know that they think it's safer. I think they think, and this is because they may have played, if, if they have played Trophy Dark, they're conditioned to think that all combat is death. That's probably part of it too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and also we like, you know, as part of our, the whole, as part of all of our marketing for Trophy, we were always like, oh, combat's so dangerous and so deadly. Even in Trophy Gold, it's deadly, right? But, but in fact, when you get down to nuts and bolts, it is very deadly, but it, there are lots of instances where combat is the preferable thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. because you you can blow your armor and and not worry about taking any ruin. So I, I think that's interesting. I think it's, just, it's an interesting dynamic, like the sort of, with everything with Trophy Gold, the, the sort of like risk reward assessment is so intriguing. Um, how players approach it is always very fascinating. So. Another star, of course, for the art of that. Yes, and yeah. the whole the model's really module. good. Yeah, yeah, it's a great module. They, they did a good job on this one. Diogo wrote this one, and the I don't know who did the art, but they did a great job. Um, it's, pretty, it's it's got such a distinct look, which I think is a lot of fun. And um, and now it's your home. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> exactly. I, I, 
I do have a question um, that I, I'm just a bit of confusion. Is there actually a princess? Yes. Uh, if so, I, I was going to say it, but I didn't want to interrupt Adrian. But you will find her body in the princess's chambers the first time you go in there. Uh, Lady Holston okay. killed her. So, okay. yeah. Now, in the actual module, the the story in the actual because obviously that stuff doesn't happen in the actual module. I changed that for our campaign. But the way the actual module, like if you play the module just as written and with no other additions or anything. It's still the same thing. The princess will try to make an alliance with you because she wants to destroy the Blood King. And she behaves basically as she did up until I revealed she was Lady Holston in our game. But she has this other character, this Lord Demetrius, who is like her sniveling creature who wants to, uh, who wants to help her or whatever. But he has his own like duplicitous uh, motivations. And I basically swapped that guy out for Sarku. Uh, but I changed the motivations a little bit and because I think that in my head canon, Sarku didn't, Sarku was serving the original blood princess and, and then Lady Holston murdered her. And so now Sarku is like, oh, you know, I guess I got to deal with this now, you know, so, um, but yeah, that's kind of basically how it all, that's, yeah. But the blood princess was dead from the moment you walked in. So, okay. yeah, uh, the, the whole time was Lady Holston just toying with you all, so. Okay. And also egging you on, right? Like, you know, <laughs> she was always there to like get you back on track on the mission, so, yeah. Well, that was great fun. Uh, I don't think I have anything else. Are we all good? No, my last wish is that I find a way home. Yeah, we shall see, we shall see. <laughs> Let's stop the recording.